What is good? We're back. We got some plummeters. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm hanging. Like, like, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. idiot. We got the tripod back together. We're, uh, we, we did some skyrocketing, so make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel or to the podcast. You get all that right to your little fingertips. Um, but, you know, you can't do uh, one without the other. Just like love and, and marriage goes together like a horse and carriage. Um, so Skyrocketing might versus be a, plummeting. Might be a little dated reference there for, for some people. I don't know. Um, so they only know Al Bundy from Modern Family. Uh, yeah. So. I feel like right. Al Bundy's been making some <laughs> rounds back on the reels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we got some guys going down down the ranks a little bit here. Um, I think for most of them, I just want to kind of talk about, you know, if if we're if we're still in it all, or if there's context of why they're plummeting and and kind of that jazz. Maybe we won't rank these ones uh, like we did the the risers uh, so much. But uh, first one off the rip, I think we're all pretty much going to be at the same uh, answer here, but. Wanted to hit a little Zay Flowers because the last two weeks have been 6.9 and 2.1. And, and he's been able to be in your lineup for pretty much all, all year and, and hasn't hasn't really hurt you. Hasn't hasn't been awesome, but hasn't been terrible. And, and the volume was there, so built-in floor. But I think if you're not watching the Ravens, you're saying, you know, what's Lamar Jackson doing? Where if you're watching the Ravens, Lamar Jackson is playing fucking outstanding football. Lights um, out, baby. Just so good. Um, and their defense is awesome. And their run game is just on point with Lamar and with Gus. Now you got a little Keaton Mitchell. He'll be in the rotation. Any cause for concern? I think he's he's probably felt, you know, Addison's jumped up probably ahead of him for a lot of people if they didn't already have him there. Um, and and probably just, you know, giving some people a little bit of pause here. So any, any uh, real concern for Zay Flowers moving forward, Big D? No. Not, not for me. He hasn't jumped up. He hasn't plummeted behind Addison for me. He's still ahead of Addison. Oh, look at you. Um, I, I just think it's just it's situational, man. It's just the way football is. I mean, they didn't they had they didn't need him at all against my Hawks. The, the you know they just took a took a giant deuce right there on the on the uh, out there in Baltimore, <laughs> right on the field. They they were horrible, and uh, and the week before they played Arizona. So I I just I don't know. I I, I think it does show that they're is some sick uh there there is some concern with the floor for him um and it, but, it, but again i think it's situational football i don't think it's a flowers i don't i mean it's definitely not lamar jackson it's just they haven't really needed him so they're not going to throw the damn ball to him <laughs> right when you i think they ran for like 226 or something in this last game yeah or something yeah i mean they got they got rookies coming off the bench just you know busting out 45 yeah. yard touchdown runs you know just uh, right up the gut uh, anyway we, we won't talk about the game but <laughs> but point is is like yeah i, I you know in in the games like uh you know they're playing cleveland that's a tough defense next they're playing cincinnati um cincinnati can also score you know so i i, I think that you'll see you'll see the bounce back um he he's already to me kind of established himself as um as a wide receiver one on that team. Is he mm -hmm. a wide receiver one, like NFL wide receiver one? Probably not, but he is what they are. They need him to be right now. Right. And right. Um, besides Andrews, there's just nobody, nobody's really stepped up. I mean, I know Odell finally got a touchdown, but it was late, late in the game. And he, he really hasn't been a difference maker on the field. Um, Bateman is Bateman Maybe in the backyard. Back? I yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He's, 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 He's not anywhere to be seen. So my, my point is that they're asking him to do a lot of things. He's proven that he can do some of those things. I don't I don't think he's number one. I never did think that. But I, but again, I, I I still think he's an, a talented player. And I think with the right personnel, the right game script, um, he's he's going to be you know just just as good of, of some of these other rookie receivers, if not better. Um, on days yeah, so. I just I think you're you're seeing Lamar not not throwing for big totals and and throwing it to to Andrews in some of these games where it's not bigger totals where I think he threw for like buck 80 in this right. game and they still put up 30 you know uh I think yep. you're just you, you might have a little bit of that here and there I think as things go him and Flowers will get a little bit it's, it's a it's a brand new system and and Flowers is a rookie um so I, I'm not I'm not very concerned if if anybody wanted to get out of Flowers for a first I would still trade you all day long oh, yeah. Uh, for that so not terribly concerned with anything uh, with flowers but wanted to start there uh, next now's the time to go buy some flowers sure yes. 
Um, next, let's go. Let's go, Damian Pierce, because been been a guy of mine, and you know, I think at this point, I would have to concede that if if you if you had an offer for a first for Damian Pierce and didn't take it, that was the wrong move. Um, what this week at least semi proved out to me was just that it doesn't really necessarily matter who the running back for the Texans is. They just don't have a run game. Um, yep. Everybody was, oh, Singletary, ooh, Singletary, pick up Singletary, pick up Singletary. I mean, they just, they their ability to run the ball is non-existent. Um, Pierce looks the best out there. I think they'll get it fixed. I think there's still room for me to buy a little bit of Pierce. I wouldn't go crazy with it. Um, I think the player's still good. I just, you know, you would think the situation all of a sudden is really good. And it was starting to get a little perplexing there of like, oh, maybe, maybe it is Pierce, but it's nice to see somebody else come in and struggle. I don't like to cheer for other people's failures. Um, <laughs> right. But it at least made me feel a little bit better about that. He, he's been completely unstartable, uh, but it just seems like the running game is not there. Um, not completely out on Pierce. I'd still go bargain basement shopping for him. If somebody wanted to give him up for relatively cheap, I would I would buy in. Uh, but in the mock draft that we're doing, he's shot down. And, 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 you know, I think it's warranted at this point. What are your thoughts on on Damian Pierce? Yeah, I mean, I think I would um, I, I would I would definitely just uh, running backs are just like quarterbacks this year are, <laughs> are hard to come by. And and um, I would I would send out some offers for him. Um, you know, but again, like you said, it would it would definitely be be low end offers or it'd be older. Like, uh, would you go Mozart? Um you know, and if you're on a on a rebuild team, and get get Pierce, um, yeah, try to swap a 31 year old for Pierce. Yeah, yeah I mean, sure, for Pierce, uh, if, you know, if he's not doing like anything that. for you, maybe you know. And that sounds that sounded crazy at the beginning of the year. It sounded crazy, you know, even coming out of my mouth just now. But but I mean, people look at points, man. You know, <laughs> Mozart's been putting points up. Um, a chance not there, and and maybe you could get some deal like that. So yeah, I definitely would be trying to buy him low um i'm not going to sell them if i have them because you know you're not as the point of the explanation of what i just said tells me that you're not going to get anything for them so right. so i think i would hold and and i agree with you i mean that uh it's another mark on stroud is like how how great he's doing with that offensive line because right. i don't think it's a running game problem i think it's an offensive line problem and, right and, uh, the, and but their pass blocking wise their offensive line is operating really well which is not something that we do see sometimes you know it does yeah mm-hmm that's true. I would have thought that they they could at least establish a little bit better run game, and I you know I, I just you know sure if 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 Brees Hall was there, I'm sure he would be doing a little more something than anybody else there. But there's not that many Brees Halls, you know. I think yeah. just about anybody else that you put out there that isn't in that elite level of running back, I don't think is doing very much in in uh, Houston right now. Which you know wouldn't have been if if you would have told me Houston has the record they did and are putting up the offensive production that they did and said they couldn't have a run game. I would, I'd be like, there's no way. Um, yeah. So You're interesting insane. there. Um, let's keep it moving here. Let's go to Sanders. I know we were big on Sanders and especially big D uh, yeah. big on Sanders. And, and I, we were, you know, it seemed like we have a path to a uh, decent amount of touches, decent amount of catches. We wasn't going to be Philadelphia easy, but we, we still think we could get good fantasy production from them. And, you know, banged up through a lot of the season for the most part. And now, the, you know, this past week they said Chuba was the guy, uh, at least for, for the near future here. Thoughts on, on Sanders? <sighs> yeah, this was, this one's <laughs> a tough one for me, man. I just, um, I, I still believe in Sanders. I know, I know, you know, a lot of people will call it crazy, but I just, I've watched quite a bit of Carolina because I'm trying to understand Bryce Young if I want to buy him, right? Um, and like, just everything I see from that offense, man, I, I just, I, I mean, I, no, I'm not announcing shocking news that it's been horrible, but <laughs> like when you watch the actual game and you watch what they're doing, it's just like, man, it is atrocious. Like it is worse than horrible. Like it is like, like their offensive line um, on, on a running play, you're supposed to push forward. They look like they're pass blocking. I mean, they're like <laughs> two yards behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, it is just, it's just bad. And I, I think um, Sanders got dinged up a little bit. I think they're kind of saving them. Uh, I, at least this is my hope. <laughs> they're kind of saving them a little bit and putting Chuba out there because Chuba's um, 
Chuba's uh, ability to run through some of that crap may, may be a little bit better than Sanders, especially if Sanders isn't a hundred percent, but I, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I feel bad for all the people who were hyped up with me for Sanders. I, I still think there's hope for them. You know, the way that they were using them in the beginning of the season and um, the targets that he was getting and, right. the and all that game is what we need yeah. back from Sanders to get some, some, some momentum back. Right, was there, but I, I just think it's the 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 whole offense as a whole, man. And and yeah. we talked about this offline, and I won't get too deep into it, but man, I'm I'm I think Wright has to be Frank Wright has to be on the hot seat, man, because like what he did in Indianapolis, there were some issues with Jonathan Taylor and some things there in the run game and the way that he was scheming, and now he's gone to Carolina, and man, Carolina's offensive line looked legit at the end of the season last year, you know, going into this season, and and it just is a clusterfuck right now. Excuse mm-hmm. pardon my French, but man, it is just horrible. So I, I like to, I'm pointing arrows at everyone else. Um, I'll, I'll take the loss for Sanders. Cause I, I was, I was leading the pack there with him and Daniel Jones. So it's been a rough, uh, you know, I've been, I've been drinking quite a bit. Um, no, <laughs> don't, don't do that folks. Just kidding. But, um, or, well, I'm not kidding. I've been drinking quite a bit, but, but San, <laughs> Sanders has been, Sanders is tough, man. I still, I'm still buying. I, I'm still trying to find that cheap, you know, uh, the, the, the dude that, you know, completely out on him or, or, seeing if I can get him in deals. I, I haven't been able to pull any triggers yet. You know, uh, we'll see over the next couple of weeks, but, um, but man, I, I don't know. What, what about you? Yeah. I'm, I'm similar to, to Pierce. I, I, I don't think all of a sudden Miles Sanders just can't play. Um, you know, I, th- I think he's fine. Um, I, it's not working out like you thought it would. Uh, and, and some of it is probably on Sanders. Some of it is on the health and some of it is on Carolina Panthers. I mean, you know, you're going to take your shots. It's not like Miles Sanders was terribly expensive, but in the area that he was going in, it seemed like, uh, you know, a, a pretty good shot to take uh, with your chances of being like, all right, well, you know, we should be able to get 10 to 12. And if he scores, we get 20 um, from yeah. Miles Sanders. And it's just, you know, unless he's heavily involved in the passing game, he's basically useless as far as a start right now. So tough sledding. Uh, they do have a three or four year deal locked in with him. I think mm-hmm. he's at least on the team for another year unless they just outright say, hey, we're good. You know, and then I think they have a potential out the following year. It seems like he's going to hang around. And you're right. You know, the offensive line was something that we thought was just, could be just middle of the pack and be fine and, and maybe even improving. And it has just gone the complete other way. Um, you know, I think we can, you know, probably piggyback right into uh, Bryce Young with talking him because he's certainly a plummeter a, a little bit with – Stroud putting up these numbers and Stroud being doing what Stroud's doing doesn't help Bryce Young's cause. I think there's enough good being done with Bryce Young right now with the situation that he's in. He's grinding his way through these and figuring things out, how to process at this next level. I thought the week before against the Texans, you saw some good stuff this this past week. I'm not going to say I watched a ton of the game because it just was unappealing to watch and the, the, the Dallas Eagles game was was really, really entertaining. Um, so I, I kind of focused all everything onto that. I did have three TVs up so you could watch, I could watch all the four o'clocks, but I chose to basically focus on, uh, it was just, you know, not all that much fun to watch, um, the, the Carolina game and the Colts with Minshew. If, if Richardson was in there, I might've been a little more, uh, excited. Uh, but you know, Bryce young, probably plummeting down a little bit. I think I'm still okay with Bryce. I don't, I don't think he's been like, Oh my God, he's so bad. Like, I think. Given the situation, uh, and, and you know, I, I'm I'm okay with it. I think you get a lineman and and, a, and another receiver in there that that can that can help you move forward. I think I think you're all right. And if we can, if we could just rise the rise the whole tide a little bit with with Carolina. I think Miles can be all right. And I think I think Bryce Young can end up being you know, not not necessarily a bust. Um, you know, I, I think people will because of CJ Stroud's success right now are, are, are extra hard on Bryce and Anthony Richardson is not playing, but was, was playing, you know, pretty well, at least fantasy wise. Um, so it's not a great look for, for Bryce young right now. And especially people yeah. who are very, very reactionary, um, and don't want to put the time in to actually watch anything. They just want to tell you how bad he is because, you know, he's not winning any games. And when you overall look at some stuff, you know, it's like, eh, it's, it's not awesome. So, uh, yeah. What are your what are your thoughts on on Bryce? Yeah, I mean, same thing as Sanders, man. I mean, that offensive line and 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 the way that they're scheming, it's just it's just absolutely horrible. Like I, 
I'm I'm pointing fingers at the coaching staff. I, I still believe in Young. I still think that there's an opportunity there. I, you know, we talked about Dak on the Riser show. If I'm if I'm um, looking to rebuild and I've got Dak on my team, I might look in because at this point, <clears throat> the way Dak's playing and the way Young just played, throwing three interceptions, two of them for pick sixes um, to the same you know same defensive player. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the that type of game. I mean, I might be able to flip that value and get you know get Young plus uh, you know Young Bryce well, I'm Young. I'm sure you can plus, get Young plus a ton right now. Yeah, on Dak, and I, I might do that if I'm a rebuilder because I, I don't need Dak at the, at this point. He's he's scoring points and he's hurting my one on one chances for my first overall. And 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 if I can get, I I, I just I look at Carolina and I, and I'm telling you, it's like that. It, and, and I hate to just keep ragging on the offensive line because it's not just the offensive line. When they hike the ball and they're going to run, none of the running, none of the wide receivers move. They all sit stationary, and it's like no shit. They're, they're running the ball because nobody's moving. Like it's just an absolute shit show right now. There, um, I, I guess I'm more fired up about the Panthers than, than I realize as I'm yeah. talking right now. But, but dude, it's just I, I, I just feel I feel for Young. I, I still think he's he's got some there. I'm I'm trying to find glimmers of hope. That's why I keep watching these games. I'm just kind of looking. I thought last week at, was a gl- not this week, but the la- the Texans game. Yes, was, the Texans was, games was, yep. gave you some mm-hmm. hope. It was like all right, it did. This is, yeah. This looks like it's it could work. Um, yep. And it, you know, I think this is what you're going to have. Uh, th- what you're having with the with Carolina right now is a little bit like what I thought we would have with the Texans. You know, they just, yeah. I think they have, you know, <laughs> they got the fucking Niners staff juice over there, man. Like they, yeah. they've, they've got a defense that's, that's staff juice. That's pretty good. They've got, you know, the, the Niners, right. Bobby Slowick over there, you know, which is odd that they can't get the run game going in Houston uh, with, with that, yeah. you know, kind of you know we see mike mcdaniel's getting it going down there with with what they're doing um but but carolina also doesn't have a tank dell man they they don't their 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 wide receivers are not they're not at the same caliber in my opinion than than houston you know there's no separation for young um you know i i think that what he's been doing this year, the tape that the NFL tape that's out there, he's probably doing to band-aid some of this stuff, not not just him, but the coaching staff too. And obviously they kept doing it because that's why they read the scheme so well and got two pick sixes on him because it was probably something that he's been trying to do to to offset that that line. I, I don't know that for sure. This is me me saying things, watching football for the last, you know, 30 years, like just, just kind of feels, has a gut feel that, that, that something like that happened, that he's given some kind of tell on the tape and, and more than likely, in my opinion, it's because he has to, because of, he has to get the ball out so fast. But anyway, yeah, he's a buy for me. Um, I'm not out on him. I, I don't think he's a bust. I don't think you can call a quarterback a bust when the whole team is just God awful. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and we'll see, I, I, I don't know. Tier wise, I don't know where he's at, you know, um, but but I think that uh, he's 22 years old. The dude's a young young kid, man. Um, they gave up a lot for him. That's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things going on. So I'm I'm still in Bryce Young's camp as far as um, holding out hope that he can he can you know yeah. pull this out and not not go by the wayside of of so many young quarterbacks that were thrown into just shitty positions. Yeah, same same. And and you know usually I'm not a fire a coach kind of guy, but Reich. I liked, I really liked the staff coming in. Like I liked everybody, all the parts and pieces on the staff. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've had, I, I thought Reich had had some success here and there and then just kind of faded out in, in Indy and, and maybe he just doesn't need to be the coach. Maybe he needs to be the OC or, or, or something else in the yep. organization. Um, and, and, you know, I'm doesn't seem like everything's vibing in, in Carolina right now. Uh, it seems like, you know, it might be a one and doneer and 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 do something else, switch it all up. Be nice to have DJ Moore right now uh for for Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyway, I, we got one more here uh on this list. We're going to go Tony Pollard. Um you know, a lot of people's expectations really high here. I think we were somewhere in the middle on Tony. Um, you know, I I thought there was a path to success. There was a little bit of you know, worried about what was going to happen with the run game w- with Kellen leaving and McCarthy taking over and, and you know, how, how will Tony function without Zeke? I know some people thought that that was just going to be an automatic layup. Of course, he's going to transition right into being the guy and being able to do all that. Well, you know, just a cautionary tale for all the Jalen Warren Najee that he needs to start over. You know, I think it's a little bit of a cautionary tale. Now, some of this could be attributed to a possible late season injury where maybe he didn't get all of his explosion back in that San Fran playoff game. Yep. Maybe that's the case. 
Some people are pointing to that. Um, but I also think that there's something to be said for a guy like Tony Pollard and being schemed where somebody else comes in and kind of does a little bit more of the heavy lifting. And some people will point to that. Well, when Zeke was out, he did good. He, everyone, sometimes he did early in his career. He did not. Uh, cause that was my knock against Pollard there for a little while early in the career when he would get his chances, it would just be like, eh, um, right. you know, it'd be fine. Um, I just, I think they needed, they need another guy. Tony Pollard might need another guy, uh, to, to operate with and be a little bit more in the mix with, um, that being said, I think the, uh, O line for the, for the Cowboys isn't where it could potentially thought have had been, uh, in the preseason uh, coming in for, for what all the name value is there. Some of it's been some injuries, but also just maybe not playing all the way up. Tyron Smith, I think, you know, played really well this last game. Uh, but uh, some of those other pieces uh, maybe getting beat up a little bit. I thought Tony Pollard looked pretty good in this last game against the Eagles. Uh, just uh, wasn't, d- didn't break anything off. Hasn't been in the end zone a whole lot. I think, yeah, I forget what the, the count number is, but it's pretty high right now of consecutive carries without him scoring a touchdown. He has passed, uh, Deontay Johnson has passed the baton to, to Tony Pollard here. Um, you know, a little bit more in the receiving game would be good. And I think, you know, we, we alluded to that schedule, uh, maybe lightening up, loosening up a little bit for Pollard. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's Giants, uh, Carolina, Carolina, Commanders, Commanders, Seahawks, Seahawks, which, you know, I think so. <clears throat> then the Eagles, Buffalo, Miami, Detroit. Ooh. Right. So, I mean, I think I think it loosens up here for a little bit. I think you could get Tony yeah. Pollard back on track, help you get into the playoffs potentially. Uh, but certainly moving down some rankings a little bit. Um, he's put up nine points, eight point four points, 17 points, a bye, six point five and nine point three in the last few games. Um, so, you know, not really necessarily helping you out uh, for, for what you paid and what you need from Tony Pollard. Um I think it's there. I think it's able to be had. I think he could he could get back to double a double digit guy at, with with some some upside. Uh, he should have had one had a TD in this last game. Um, didn't didn't uh, didn't work out. Uh, so you know is 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 Tony Pollard a buy because he's a, he's a twenty six and you could say hey he's going to be twenty seven but he's also like a lower mileage guy who I you know I don't I don't see the wheels necessarily falling off unless you're in the camp of believing that he's already lost some explosion from said injury from past years or past year. Yeah, I don't think he's a buy for me. Um, I, I I wasn't ranking wise. He's, he's always just kind of been an outlier in the sense of like, I, 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 I feel like um, Kellen's scheme worked really well for Pollard and, and um, I almost said Emmett Smith for Zeke, <laughs> for Zeke and, and Pollard. I, I feel like that scheme situation worked really well and, and allowed Pollard to shine at his strengths. And I don't think McCarthy's really doing that with, with mm-hmm. him. Um, whether that's because they don't have enough behind him, whether that's because they want to run the ball differently. I, I don't know what the, the reason is, but um, I, I definitely think he can outperform his six and <laughs> nine point games. But, but I, I don't know if I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be aggressive with, uh, with trying to go out and, and find him like I am with, uh, you know, with, the, with some of the other, uh, running backs. I mean, running backs are, 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 are challenging. You know, there's, there's a lot of thirst out there for running backs in a lot of leagues because of injuries and because of, because of things. So I'm not saying don't, don't try. I, I do think he, I do think his floor is a little higher than, um, what you know, we've seen. With, with what we've seen, you know, and, uh, but I mean, he's only what twelve carries. I mean, I I don't know. That just doesn't feel like enough for. He's got twelve carries the last two weeks: fifteen, eight, and eleven. And then, yeah, one of, one of those games they they were they crushed whoever they played a week or two ago. Yeah, one of those yeah, games. and I know some of it's been game script wise. Um, you know, um, yeah, it just, but it just seems like you know I don't, he's I would almost guarantee you he's not a cowboy next year. Um, so he'll probably go somewhere else, get a change of scenery. Yeah. Um, I just think, I think he's, I think he's too if young. You can get, if you can get him for a reasonable price, you know, anything under a first, for you know, a two and, and something else potentially. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good price for Tony Pollard to play. And I think he could be, you know, I don't know that he's going to be the guy that some people thought he might be this year where he's a, a, a league wiener like uh, maybe he was for you last year. Uh, mm-hmm. where he's dropping, you know, 20 points on the reg. Uh, but I think he can be a double-digit guy. And in the, the state of the running backs right now, if you can get your RB2 to give you, 
12 points and if he scores a touchdown 20 and I think he's a, a pretty good receiver like hey maybe he, he's maybe he goes over Austin Eckler gets paid by somebody else Tony Pollard goes over to the Chargers Tony Pollard yeah. you know gets gets decent uh, you know back back to having decent usage um, with, with Kellen Moore who's very familiar with him so I think there's a little bit of meat on that bone I wouldn't go overpaying or, or really seeking it out a, a ton but um, you know I, I, I think there's um, yeah, he feels like one of those out, players so. where I might might throw him in on a deal or he might be one of those players where I'm completely out of the playoffs or I'm completely out of out of the hunt I might look for 2024 because I do agree with you I do think that there's brighter days to come for him and anytime players are playing really low like this is is a is a good time to buy I, I don't know if if it's quite yet. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I just, if I could give a second and Dobbins, would you do that for Pollard? I mean, sure. I think, I think I'll do anything for Dobbins if I could get, you know, I'm just, I want to take that off my plate if I can. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think of like injuries that have happened, you know, obviously Cam Akers, I, you know, yeah, probably not gonna uh, him. poor, poor dude. Uh, you know, like I don't think the value there is completely gone. Um, yeah, like yeah. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe a two in Jerome Ford. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, that works. Just if I could, if I could get him for like a you know a cheaper guy or you know you know a, a, a bench wide receiver that can come in and, and play in spot duty and trade a two, I think I would be fine with that. With just for the prospect of what Tony Pollard can be and what we've seen him be, I don't know that he's washed. Um, he's still like I said. He's not a 26 year old where I'm like, oh my god, he's got a million carries on his body. Like he he started off pretty light carry wise. Then he had a, a very small window with a decent amount of carries and an injury. Um, so you know, I think there's there's probably still a little bit better version of Tony Pollard uh, for your for your fantasy team out there for for the next year or three. So um, all these guys plummeting. I'm, I'm not I'm not necessarily out on any one of them, uh, but I think they got a little cheaper. Um, and, and I think there's, um, I think there's at least some context to be provided with a lot of these guys and, and why and how they're struggling, which is, I think more the point, uh, of what the exercise was for me to go through and is there just some justification and are, are you still interested? So, uh, any, any closing thoughts, big D before we get out of here? No, I mean, I, I think this is a good list. Of, oh, oh, um, oh, let's go Olave, uh, real quick. Oh, oh yeah. Olave. Hit me with a little uh, Olave talk here. Yeah, I mean, he definitely had a little bit of a bounce back this last week, but but I mean, he is uh, he's definitely plummeting, and he's definitely on my buy list. Both 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 of those are true, I think, or or I guess he was plummeting. I guess after this week, um, you know, think think things change just like that in the NFL, as we all know. But uh, target wise, I mean, he's just in the last three weeks. I mean, he's just gobbling up targets. They haven't come to fruition yet, as far as as far as points go, as far as where you drafted them or what your expectations were coming into this year. But again, you got to remember that this is a new offense, you know, that, that they're playing in. And sometimes it works really well for players and sometimes it doesn't, you know, Derek Carr coming in, Derek Carr's not going anywhere. A not going anywhere. Um, he's still getting targeted. And, and, and so he's one of those players where I just kind of feel like I don't see why you wouldn't try to get him because his, his ceiling, you know, the way he runs routes, the way, you know, the way that he, you know, the way that he, um, or at least the expectation of the way that he plays is, um, you know, up, up, upwards of, of the wide receivers. You know, he's probably, right. I don't know where he ranks right, right this second, but, um, you know, your, your wide expectation of him is like Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson obviously is, is taking a couple steps back because of, of the Rogers injury, you know, um, maybe around the DK area, like maybe that's a little bit too low because he's younger. Olave is younger. So, so I don't know. My, my, my take on Olave is the dude's getting a ton of targets. It's not clicking. It doesn't feel right right now. Um, I, they have to iron it out because unless somebody demands a trade, <laughs> they, Mike, uh, Michael Thomas is uh, on his way out. He's, he's uh, every week. It seems like he's getting less and less involved. So, um, and, and Hill can't play forever. The dude that's like the multi-tool, the fucking Swiss <laughs> the army of everybody's like, existence. Yeah. That, Saints that fantasy can't, points. can't play forever. So, so I, I feel like brighter days are ahead for Olave, and, and, and he's got the upside ceiling of a wide receiver, high end wide receiver one to me. So I, I just think now would be a good time to strike where they are. And is, uh, I don't know, 
doll. Yeah, would you <laughs> would you be moving off somebody like a like a Diggs if you're a rebuilding team and trying to get yeah. Olave? Yeah, Diggs, Devontae, Keenan Allen, any you of those type of veterans. That. Would you add a first to Diggs to get Olave? Uh, not my first. Like if I'm rebuilding, you know, that first right. is probably going to be kind of higher. So I probably wouldn't, I would probably wouldn't send my first, but if I had a, if I already been doing some rebuilds and I've got a, you know, I've got a, 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 a first that's looking like it's going to be, um, you know, in the, in the competition for winning the league, then yeah, I probably would send that in digs and, and, uh, it's in the first, and it's in digs separately. Ooh. See if, which one sure. you're interested in before I try to, because that's not necessarily a great deal with the way Diggs is playing right now. Or maybe a 25 first. But, but if you're in the rebuild years. and you're 30, like, I mean, in a year, that gap widens even more. And then another year, that gap widens even more. So sure. if you're in the rebuild, then, you know, I think, I forget who it was, but it was like Julio Jones and somebody else and Big and and big big Co was like, should we make this deal? And I was basically said the same thing. I was like, it's right now in this year, right here, it's, it sounds like a good deal, but one more year goes by and that gap widens. And then, you know, once two years goes by, Jesus Christ, that, that, that you can't even, you can't close that gap. Like nobody wants 31 yeah. year old Stefan Diggs. you know, ah, more so than 31 year old Julio because Diggs wins with quickness and route running. And right. Well, that's, you know, regardless. and he doesn't look like he's slowing down a ton. I mean, no, I mean, it could happen in a hurry. He could end up not in Buffalo anymore. You know, who, who really knows? But just the idea of the, the older wide receiver um, and then moving to somebody like Olave, who could be what Diggs is right now um, for five, six years. Um, you know, is so yeah, the age the first to the Waddle owner first. See if, if I can do that before I get, go Olave. Is that... No, Waddle and Olave is in the same tier for me. Let me get Waddle. Yeah, I mean, Easily I, I, for I, me. I, I like Waddle a little more. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just the idea when you have these these premium players, he's getting the volume, like you said, he's getting the targets, and he's he's just down a little bit. And it, it should, you know, with the route running prowess of what he had, which is always the first thing you said and then he's that, that everybody said about him, and then he's a really fast player. Him and him and Derek Carr just need to, you know, have an eyeliner party and figure it out. Um, you know, yep. maybe it's Maybelline. I don't Play know. some uh, dashboard confessionals. Get that emo on. Get your eyeliner out. And right. Just, you know, kumbaya. You know, so, uh, you know I, I agree with you there. Probably down a little bit, like you said, rebounded a little bit here. Um, but yeah, I think I think he's a good guy to try to swap out with somebody who's playing at a high level on on a mid middling or rebuilding team that's a little older if you got to add something to it add something to it and, and and grab that younger asset right there so yep all right that's gonna do it for the plummeting uh be sure to like subscribe comment below we got rebuilding stuff uh still coming out in the next couple of weeks we got a 2024 rookie mock we got a 2024 startup mock uh we got um five dollar holler on the discord we got three extra episodes going down over there a month so five bucks gets you the Discord, gets you uh, extra episodes, all that jazz. Uh, so a lot of fun over there. Uh, we very much appreciate you guys. Five-star review on the podcast. Revelry Bruco for a t-shirt if you want to support the team that way. A uh, lot, uh, lot of ways to, to help your boys out. Easiest is like and subscribe and comment below. And uh, five-star review on the podcast. So we appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.